is it, Martha? Uh, this way, please. Heaven. Thank you. Did you ever see anything like them? Hmm. I might have sent them myself. Thank you for a wonderful evening, Novak. Don't let it turn your head. It's not you that Novak's after. Toss your boy, Charles. Oh, not your day, Charles. Tails. It was heads, Mr. Novak. Oh, oh, oh must be all those carrots you eat. Thank you, if you don't mind. Whiskey and soda. And I'll have a uh, vodka and tonic. Thank you, gentlemen. I don't know how to thank your wife for last night's dinner, Sir John. I thought you'd done it with flowers. Ah, those. <laughs> Whose gardens did you rob? Buckingham Palace? Oh, the royal gardeners were very kind. All right, so you enjoyed your dinner. How can I convince you, Sir John, that my intentions are purely commercial? Well, let's assume, for the sake of speed, that you have done. If British firms put in for this contract, Sir John, they'll get it. I don't see why. Mm, Poland has its reasons. We need new roads. You have the road-making machinery. What about your Russian masters? They'll have to lump it. They're not very good at lumping it where the satellite countries are concerned. In this time, they'll have to. Besides, we owe Britain some trade. Last year, we sold you nearly 20 million pounds worth more goods than we bought from you. Yes, but why me? Who better to get British firms interested? I won't lead them into a fight they can't win. I'm a bad loser, no man. You have my word, Sir John. I wonder why they always sit behind the Times or Telegraph, never the Mirror or Express. Hmm? British security, man. Him? Even if you hadn't told them we were meeting Sir John, they'd have found out. Oh, we're in London now, not in one of your Eastern democracies. You make democracy sound like a dirty word. And you could be rich without working, Sir John. At poker. Thank you. Uh, would you give the gentleman over there a drink? He looks thirsty. Yes, Sir John. You're known here. Both of us, it seems. Oh, I'm known wherever I go. By security men, as well as the waiters. Here in the Foreign Office, there's more personal gossip than in a lady's hairdressers. So, Wilde has been seeing a lot of a communist diplomat. Minister Novak is his country's top intelligence agent in the UK. You know perfectly well that half the CD cars in London are driven by professional spies. Well, I'm merely reporting, Minister, what if you, you don't say. Think... Wilde has been got at. Sir John Wilder of Red. He may not know the risks he's running. Wilder? He'd never go for a bath without water wings. Now, don't humbug me, Father. What you're saying is that he's been got at, brainless. He's an amateur. He failed to notify our security boys he was meeting Novak. And all that proves is that he's telling you to stick your bureaucratic nonsense up your filing system. Anyway, after your phone call, I thought I'd better make sure. Has uh, Connie has arrived yet? He's here now, Minister. Send him in. Now, take it from me, Father. If while it is up to anything, it'll have to do with personal profit. Not left-wing politics. Oh, come in, Congress. I uh, take it you two know each other? Over long years, Minister. If MI5 were told that Sir John Wilder was seeing a lot of a uh, suspect diplomat... Novak. Oh, you know. It's our business, John. Well? We're taking no action, Minister. It wouldn't be the first time we'd disagreed. In our view, Wilder is no security risk. <laughs> you mean he went to the wrong school? Well, he does seem to have the wrong background for treason. Yes, Minister. Your Eton Oxford are in trouble, Fowler. 
I must say, I can't see Wilder running a collective farm. Oh, dear, the old establishment is not what it was, is it, Fowler? Still, you can't blame us in view of fairly recent events if we have reservations about the dependability of the public school product. Well, the score is bound to look a bit lopsided, Minister. How is that? In view of the fact that 90% of the diplomatic service comes from the public schools and from Oxbridge. All the same, Jason, don't be in too big a hurry to even the score. I must still place on record my concern about Novak. You mean your concern about Wilder? Well, do what you like. A good day, gentlemen. I, I, have a, I have a speech to make in the Lords in half an hour. Yes, sir? Uh, call Jarvis, is the coronet makers, and tell them that I'm free for a fitting this afternoon. He appeared to be unduly hasty to bring you in. Cunning devil, making doubly sure while the land's in it. And failing. We're too busy to waste time on tittle-tattle, Jason. So if you could just uh, keep an eye on him for us. It's 35 years since I was in the Boy Scouts. Ah, so we've baden pile to blame. <laughs> Novak was never a Boy Scout. Communist youth from the day he first walked. I think most of your people Colorblind. All they see is a great red blur. Hardly thought you were committed to actually doing any business with Novak. That's not surprising, since I told you. Mm. What we'd like, Sir John, is for you to string him along a little. We'd like to know exactly what his game is. If there's trade in it, I'll string him along till 1984. If not, I'll cut him out tomorrow. And you can hound him till he drops. Have you uh, any idea what he might be up to? Another scotch? Thank you. I do have vodka. Yes, sir, I'd noticed, sir. Three brands. Serious. Mm. Thank you. Here, Connors. Mm -hmm. Have a look at this. Oh, I know who they're from, Sir John. We saw him place the order. Chose all the flowers personally, you know. Hmm. He has taste. I'll admit that. John, I am entitled to know what you're up to. Only when it becomes official. I expect the pinstripe time servers to get in my way, but not you. I am minister responsible for this section. And if it's any consolation to you, I probably am not going to Warsaw. Oh. I should, John. They need roads. Somebody has been doing their research, darling. Oh, somebody. You could do a good job in Warsaw, John. This makes me sure it's the last place I should go. Hmm. Would you like to open it? Or shall I? There's clearly not a bomb or you wouldn't be here. <laughs> now, if ever you become a baron, John, bear in mind the price. The balls are solid gold. 18 carat. You mean you can actually wear it? <laughs> and you're going to the opening of Parliament in that? You know, it's one of the few ways left to hoard gold without breaking the law. The Bank of France has nothing on you, has it? Don't underrate the Lords, John. We represent the accumulated wisdom of long lifetimes. All you've done is to replace the music hall. Take my advice, John. Go to Warsaw. Oh, by the way, Caswell, coronets are not worn at the opening of Parliament. I don't think you'll be around for the next coronation. <laughs> Shall I take clothes for one week or two? For where? Warsaw. You're not going, and even I may not be. I hear Novak's family make the most exquisite glass. Novak is a salesman. Yes, he's charming. And with a reputation with security. Security? Oh, I forget it. Well, don't be foreign office furtive with me, John. Is he a spy? Of sorts. I always wanted to meet one, a real one. He's one of the hygienic ones with full diplomatic immunity. Free parking, no breath tests and CD plates? Mm. Quite a job when you come to think of it. Anyway, you can forget about Warsaw. If you go, I go. Well, Caswell's so set on my going, 
that I'm damn sure I shouldn't. Oh, the Queen, you know. You forget. I haven't seen him for almost a week. Lincoln, how lovely to see you. Lady Wilder. You look like our man at the UN when the have not nations have ganged up on him. Well, ganging up's the word. Lincoln's lips are sealed. I'll just have to sign the official secrets act myself. Well, have a large brandy and get whatever it is off your chest. I haven't got all night. Oh, it's all right, Lincoln. I won't be able to hear a thing from the splashing of soda. Well, it's about Novak. Oh, our, our power man. You should have notified security you were meeting him. If I'd known, I would have notified them automatically on your behalf. I haven't time to report everything I do to those dried up bloodhounds. The day I start, you can automatically notify my psychiatrist. They won't brush off that easily, Wilder. Thank you. The office is touchy about such things. Especially since Burgess and Payne and Philby. The high tide of treason has left its mark and its quicksand. And you've been sent running with the warning flags. I come voluntarily, Wilder. I don't want you discredited at the Foreign Office. We already too many privileged upstarts whose only certificates of merit are their birth certificates. Hey, Lincoln, that brandy suits you. Have another. You do realize every meeting you've had with Novak has been watched. So I gave one of the bloodhounds a drink today. He looked thirsty. <laughs> he probably made notes for your dossier. Mm. Philby warned Burgess and McLean. So thank you, I'm touched. I wish I could share your indifference to security people. Ah, oh, they're pipsqueaks who are blinded by the daylight. I've been asked by one scout troop to watch Novak. I wonder which one's watching me. One of the MI sections. They and our lot have a sort of class war of their own. Eton versus Manchester Grammar kind of thing. Which one's after me? Eton. <laughs> Imagine John as the ball in the Eton wall game. Some of our career people can play just as dirty as the meanest of your big business pirates, Wilder, and they want you O-U-T. There's not one of them I couldn't skin for breakfast. Don't imagine our minister's on your side. <laughs> That'll be the day when Caswell is. He suggests that I go to Warsaw with Novak. In writing? Well, I'm not going anyway. There's not enough in it. Well, that's irrelevant. It will give the security boys a field day. Pity. Even Fowler knows you're no security risk. He's disgusted with you. And others. No, he thinks you're out to line your pockets on some Polish deal. Does he? So it seems does Lord Bly. The information's not from me. Lincoln. Now you've done it. Isn't it rather odd the way you address my husband? Hmm? Wilder? Oh, in the Foreign Office we're meant to address superiors by their surname even if they are knights of the realm. And senior officials, ambassadors, call people like me by their first names. Lincoln? How sweet. How should you address me? Oh, as you like. I insist on Pamela. Novak, it's Wilder here. I think there may be something in that idea of yours. After all, how soon can we leave for Warsaw? Make it sooner. Tomorrow. Good night, Novak. You'll come to Lincoln, and you can call me John. You're in the office, it'll have to be wilder. You're a born conservative, aren't you? Oh, there was one other thing. Oh, to hell with them, Lincoln. Let them snoop till their long ears drop off. I met Novak myself. I hope you inform security. I'm partial to a rarish Takai. Oh, Lincoln, not that Hungarian hooch. I chanced to mention this to Novak. He sent me a whole crate of it. Now, what should I do with it? We're not supposed to receive gifts. A Fowler suggests I send it back. It's awfully tricky. Oh, for God's sake, Lincoln, just drink the damn stuff. Tokai should be kept at 55 degrees, Lincoln. I'll buy you a thermostat for your cellar. I haven't got a cellar. Well, we'll build you one. Won't we, darling? And being a stockbroker? Hours. Seeing him. Hence my collecting you in this. But no one deny the job has its perks. I'd have thought you'd have found it a bit showy. Well, not the roles. Travelling with you. Anyway, you must have been misinformed. John hasn't actually seen our stockbrokers, and so is. 
And if he had been in the city with Keith, he'd still have had to have come west past our house to get to the airport. Well, we're meeting Novak at the airport. Sir John thought we ought to put in an appearance in case he's late. Now, does that make sense? Yes. Look, John wouldn't fret about keeping the Prime Minister waiting, let alone Novak. It still makes sense. Oh? If he misses the flight, we'll go on. John said that? No. But it's an idea that grows on me. I thought only men made journeys to places like, places like Warsaw with Foreign Office bachelors. Well, you've been reading the Sunday supplements. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking what made John change his mind about Novak and going to Warsaw? Bloody mindedness, I should think. Not John. Oh, he'd make the gesture, but he'd soon find something to stop him going if it suited his book. I is it a big deal? Politically, commercially? In John's terms, millions? And dollars sterling or zloty? Zloty? That's Polish money. Lincoln, whose side are you on? I sit on fences. Not you. John's or the department's? Neither. Yours. Lady Wilder. Darling, you look after the bags, won't you? Let me have your passport, Lady Wilder. I will sprint through immigration and wait in comfort. Since where do the English go in winter? Well, which of those two? Oh, damn it, John. I'm only halfway through the second. Remind me to buy you a course in quick reading. It's like taking coals to Newcastle anywhere. Well, you keep your mind on those specifications. Leave the politics to me. I mean, the Russians aren't exactly novices at manufacturing word making at them. Which we hope, for reasons which might even be obvious to you, Don, the Poles don't want. I don't see why they should have to buy British. It's up to us to make it clear they should. Yes, well, this will need higher maintenance costs. We make a salesman of you yet. Now, see what you make of that one. Now? Well, we're not in a Dodgem car. All you need is a steady hand. And patience, John. If anybody should ask how many British models we're offering the Poles, say only one. Who's anybody? What, the resident British ambassador? Or darling? Yes, but you're an ambassador too, John. Only of the roving kind. So? So you shouldn't represent just one British product when there are others on the market. Spoken like a civil servant. Albeit of the temporary kind. Took you long enough, Lincoln. Or were you picked up as a suspected queer carrying that? I just couldn't find the damn flesh. Shouldn't you know it, Lincoln? Shouldn't you as a commie, even a westernized one, think twice before using VIP facilities denied the common people? Dry French with a hint of gin, I remembered. I'd be flattered, Lady Wilder, if you knew as much about me. You're a full-time flatterer yourself, yeah. When I flatter, it's not to deceive. Flatterers look like friends, as wolves like dogs. Lincoln, how clever. It was, when stated 300 years ago by a Frenchman. John, come in and have a drink. Uh, John's waiting. The flight's not been called yet. It will be any second. John's gone straight to the aircraft. He's uh, waiting for us all to get down to some work. Bolting cocktails is bad for you. In capitalist Britain, Yarn, we're never in such a hurry that we have to swig in one gulp. Uh, uh, this isn't a holiday excursion. I need Dowling and Henderson here to analyze this stuff. How is Keith? Fat and pompous. Are we buying or selling, and if so, what? Neither. Darling. You're cook, Lady Wilder. Why do Englishmen always imagine that the first-class section of an aeroplane is for men only? Now, you need to take in these specifications. 
I shall start now. Listens did a good job getting that out in 24 hours, with a copy in Polish. If you've forgotten your razor, Lincoln, you can always grow a beard. We're only taking Liston species. No competing model. We offer them the best. We always do best with a single commodity, don't we, Don? Yes, John. I always carry it when flying. My father carried it all the way through the war. No, uh, let me show you. It helps concentration and banishes fear. It's also lucky. I never knew you were superstitious, Jan. I'm lucky today. Try it again. You've got it. No, 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 no. Keep it. Let me fasten your belt. I appreciate that you would prefer to stay where you are, Nova. Don't run away. I'll be back to tell you all about Chester Corp's gun. Where's that? Well, it's not a where, but a she. Patron saint of Poland. <laughs> it's good to be back in civilized society. You think you should have come back to work for him, Don? Yes and no. In this mood is just bloody unbearable. I get off this aeroplane now. Well, don't forget your parachute. Tokai. Tokai? Hungarian hooch. I don't mind opposition, Novak. Just tell me where it's coming from, the Italians or the French? Why won't you believe me, Sir John? This is a straight bilateral exercise in Anglo-Polish trade. A salesman like you should tie it up in two days. You must be a man of influence. Well, no, a hell of a lot less than you seem to. I hope I didn't insult you by calling you a salesman. <laughs> I prefer that title to a peerage. Have no fear, Sir John. The contract is yours. Whose signature is on it? Yours? The minister's. Koziel will sign. I think your wife will enjoy Warsaw. What matters is that I do. Oh, you will, Sir John. Tonight, you and Lady Wilder at dinner with Koziel. I fixed it personally, myself. It will all be very personal and private. Cheers. Pozdrowne. Our Minister of Trade, Mr. Koziel, <laughs> Madam Koziel, Sir John and Lady Wilder. How do you do? Welcome to Warsaw, Sir John. And Mr. Dowling and Mr. Henderson. We'll try to make it not all business, Lady Wilder. Now do come through and meet some of our friends. <laughs> The resident British ambassador, Sir Holford Bagenall and Lady Bagenall, you know already, of course. No, we were met on arrival by a third secretary, weren't we, Bagenall? I know half my people are on holiday to them, these. The Soviet ambassador, Comrade Norov and Madame Norov. Delighted. I had no idea that this was such an occasion, Minister. It shows the importance we attach to your visit, Sir John. <laughs> Nobody of any importance here, eh? Only the British and Soviet <laughs> ambassador. Your information wasn't exactly a gem of accuracy. Dress formal, black tie. I was misled by my people at the embassy. But I buy mine at the ministry. Well, take a tip, Novak. Keep out of Wilder's way. I want you to meet a very dear friend of mine, Lady Wilder. Gloria. Sorry about the rather low level of your reception at the airport, Wilder, but my senior chaps were busy and the best cars in for servicing and... Such a note was rather sprang at us, wasn't it? 
You and your Moscow chums were rather sprung on me. I understood this was to be a formal dinner. Dress suits for those interested in the road machinery deal. You mustn't think you have a monopoly here in selling British. Whatever you sell, Sir Holford, other than your grandmother's shares. <laughs> Für wem sind diesen? Etty Dlia Cavour. When you and your husband have been in diplomacy a little longer, Lady Wilder, you will find it full of ironies. I suppose you imagine these people being communists. I try and impress and dress for dinner. Not at all, Lady Pagnell. I think all the communists look quite delightful. You'll soon, grow, you'll soon grow accustomed to this kind of exercise. In fact, you're no more than a decoy. They're merely reminding the Russians not to take things for granted again, as they did for a time with the Czechs. I'm here to sell and you're going to help me more than you have. I'm sorry to sound a note of realism, Wilder, but I assure you it's all cut and dry. The contract is going to the Russians. Mm -hmm. Simon, Wilder is all bar. Tomorrow he'll be back in Whitehall with his tail between his legs. I've just been checking the dining plan, Your Excellency. Indeed, on whose authority? Simon here is our protocol expert. And the expert's boobed. Now, just a minute. Don't forget that I am the Queen's representative here, not your tuppany apony, very temporary ambassador on loan from industry. I wasn't suggesting he should sit immediately to the right of the minister. Oh, you'd have been a bloody fool to suggest any such thing. The place on the left has a more important occupant, too. The Russian ambassador accredited here. All the same, Sir John and Lady Wilder should have more important places. Well, clearly the Poles are less mesmerized by your master than you are. Well, you must have been consulted. Well, of course we were. Now try not to sour relations, darling. We're on the most cordial terms with our host. Trade should never be on a plate, Minister. So you do not mind the competition? Competitors exist for only one reason. Oh? They pounded into the ground. <laughs> you all right, Lincoln? Yes. You don't look it, does he, Minister? Well, he's hungry, Sir John, and so am I. Uh, let's eat and drink, and tomorrow we do business. Zara, zara. <laughs> Good morning, Sir John. Mr. Henderson, uh, we asked you in second because the Soviet ambassador has to go on to a meeting of the Warsaw Pact, and you will appreciate how important that is for all of us. Only the two of you, Sir John. Any more would be a waste of time. I thought perhaps you may have been joined by your uh, 
resident ambassador. Resident ambassadors should reside, and he has his own work to do. Wilder made it clear beyond doubt that if I attended this morning, he'd take the first flight back to London. He's a solo performer, Your Excellency. The hell with his performance. What's backstage that concerns me? And which I suggest should concern you. You hardly gave him cause last night to welcome you today. Well, I'm not the only one shut out, am I? No, he frequently keeps me at a distance. Damn it, man, you are his private secretary. And he's John Wilder. Mm. But why should he keep us both out on this one? I doubt if anyone can explain the working of Wilder's mind. Aren't they? Well, let me have a try. Lincoln, isn't it a fact? That he bought specifications from only one company's product, Liston? I frankly don't know. Oh, now, come on, then, sell out, Lincoln. You're far too promising a diplomatic service officer to lose to the wild. Anyway, if you're so sure all this is some facade and the Russians will land the job, I can't check. There is always a chance, and especially in communist countries going through the, the change of life, there's always a chance that some outsider will bring off the unexpected. You know what I mean? Oh, damn this central bloody heat. I don't understand you. Does that even slightly irritate you that Wilder should keep you out today? Yes, it does. Oh, well, that's something. There's another thing. Should Wilder allow his, um, his appetite for profit to outweigh his public responsibilities, one would oh, expect so you... Oh, so Fowler's been in touch. Did he send in cipher? I, I mean, it could be libelous. I was saying, Lincoln, should Wilder allow his acquisitive instinct to get the better of you him? You would expect it? me to... Now, how does the old Etonian put it? Sneak? Well, if you prefer another word, it's whisper. I suppose there are some people on whom it wouldn't be quite the thing to sneak. Hmm. Depends on their old school. Doesn't it, Lincoln? One well, hears from personnel that your um, career reports are first class. And this year's from Fowler. One might almost describe as glowing. Mm. You could perhaps one day be, be one of our youngest ambassadors. If you keep on the right track. And my ears to the nick in the door. Yeah. Good morning, Your Excellency. Saunders, see if the American ambassador has a moment. I'd like to see him right away, if possible. Take it, Sir John, that you have your own views about which of these three products of your country is the best. I'd sooner leave the choice to your distinguished technical assessors. From the questions they've just asked, they're obviously out of their business. But you were for a time in civil engineering. Well, Liston's will give you three meters an hour more road. Steadley's appear to need less maintenance, and uh, Bolton's have the best after-service of the three. Well, I know all three companies and all three products. You're not going far wrong with any of them. Now, Sir John, for the crunch, as your people say. Oh, no, not us, the Americans. Mm. Delivery. Delivery. Well, I'll personally put a bomb under whichever management you offer the contract to. A <laughs> figure of speech, <laughs> I hope. Yes, well, real bombs would help some managements, I know, but not the firms that we are concerned with. We'll give you our decision at the weekend, Sir John. If you like, I'll ship all three models out for trial against the Russian equipment. We already know about the Soviet equipment, Sir John. So do I. I studied it in the Middle East last year. I didn't know you were in the Middle East last year, John. Are you doubting my word? I'm not guilty. My brain's washed. What are our chances, John? Uh, less than 50-50. Don, as Pamela is otherwise occupied, I wonder if you do something for her. You know her stockbroker, Keith, what's his name? Isn't he yours too? Yeah. Well, call or cable him on Pamela's behalf and tell him to buy 20,000 listings. Buddhist monks soak themselves in petrol and set themselves alive. I couldn't stand having my head shaved. Do you think listings won't get it? Oh, you know what I mean, John. Corruption in high places. 
Fowler and Bagenal, our career diplomats who see the Foreign Service as the private preserve of a few silver spoon families whose untalented sons have a birthright to the plum jobs. Can they bring back the stocks in Whitehall for you, John? They get it all strung up with their old school ties. I believe the word is knotted. You sound like Dowling. Mark that young man, Don. He's a high flyer. I should consult him about how we should contact Keith on Pamela's behalf. There's some rule that all our communication should go via the embassy. This one, not being mine, but Pamela's and private problem, he needn't. But sound out, darling, about procedure. I'll do nothing of the sort. I came back to you, John, on one condition, that I had my say in your interests. You said it. But don't argue, don't protest. Consult Dowling. He can't do it. The message is Pamela's. And she's with Novak, God knows where. Does the cable go via the embassy or privately? Either way, it's trouble. Wilder expects your advice. Since we're in a communist country, it would be advisable to send via the embassy. Oh. Uh, I wish to send a cable. Telegram. Telegram. I never took him for a bloody fool. Yes, um, it's to Keith Co, London, and reads, by 20,000 Listons. Mm. Signed, Pamela Wilder. Yes, I'll repeat. Keep going, and I'll send for oxygen. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm afraid we have to get back. Oh, but I was just beginning to enjoy myself. I'm sorry. I want to blow myself a great big brandy glass. Oh, save your pub, sweet Pamela. No, Pamela. If we can't come back here, I'll buy you a whole set. But there it is. Read it for yourself. I can't say that I'm sorry you're going, Wilder. I happen to be old-fashioned enough to believe that um, diplomacy should be conducted by diplomats from the right schools, well, at any rate of the right quality, immune to corruption. Incidentally, I hear you're not the only one on the carpet. Your industrious young friend Novak has apparently displeased his own hierarchy by rather overplaying your interests here. His misfortune. And perhaps yours. <laughs> oh, God, no, you don't need any help from him in fouling up your own cause. I mean it. It was a shade naive, wasn't it? To send a personal telegram via the embassy. Nothing on that net can be strictly private. I have the right to see all outward telegrams. And London sees them all anyway. <laughs> Should you be in the job long enough to have the opportunity to telegraph? File it with your other mini messages, Bagenal. When you've had your little gloat. You look as if you pulled the wings off butterflies when you were a boy. And now, to keep yourself in office, you'd crucify your own grandmother and get some pip squeak to put up the cross. Good day, Wilder. I never knew Lincoln had the guts. Saunders, I want to know why Wilder's telegram was not disclosed to us by Darling. But for a mere 20,000 miserable shares in Liston's, peanuts! If I knew what you were on I about... I shall have to explain your conduct to the Foreign Secretary. Now, we could be faced with your resignation, which I shouldn't favour for obvious reasons having personally brought you in, or with a big scandal released to the press later. By you, or Fowler. 
Mind how you tread, Caswell. It's slippery in the pigsty. Even if they are in Pamela's name, the shares are clearly yours. What shares? I am prepared to help you. Well, you want me here, Caswell, to ride me? I don't come the old hypocrite. What shares? I can call evidence. Fine, Caswell. Get Fowler in. Fowler? Sir Jason himself, your highly misinformed, grossly overpaid deputy undersecretary. Buzz him. Go on, buzz him, or I go to the foreign secretary. I am prepared to hush it up, John. Have me crawling in your debt forevermore? No. Get Fowler in, now. When I was building pipelines across the Syrian desert, John, I played poker every night with a man like you. Now, he always developed an imperative air when he's nothing in his hand. Fowler here, Minister. Fowler, come in here, at the double. I'd hoped that we'd be able to work together for a while. In the public interest, for Britain, with a bent ambassador. Where are your scruples, Caswell? You're bent on self-destruction. Survival is my game. I'll be around long after Fowler or Bagenal. Bagenal? I assumed our distinguished ambassador to Warsaw had been in contact. Longer even than Dowling. Dowling? Our young genius, Lincoln himself. Wilder seems to think I blabbed or gave misleading advice about your telegram. Well, then Wilder knows more about it than I do. What telegram? From Warsaw to your stockbroker. Look, when John asks Keith to sell my shares, Keith knows better he doesn't. But to buy. When John buys for me, he buys wisely. He bought Liston's, 20,000 in your name. Liston's? What are they, heavyweight boxes? <laughs> they make road-making equipment. Well, here's to motorways. You could say you sent a telegram, without his knowing. I'll say anything, any time, to help John. It will help him, and me. Well, then I'll say it, Lincoln. To whom? We'll uh, not keep you, Jason. No more than all night and day. Evidence? Tell him, Jason. The office ought to have been told, Wilder, that Liston's are getting the Polish road contract. It's news to me that they were. We have reason to believe they are. Our information... Your information? What information? Bagonels? His? Bluster won't do, Wilder. Let's stick to facts. Facts? You're in Disneyland, Fowler. 20,000 shares in Liston's isn't fantasy. Yes, sir? Will you get me City 5880, please? So, you've uncovered some grubby scandal. The outsider up to his elbows in graft. What are you going to do when they sling you out of this sinecure? John. Remember that Sir Jason is a respected civil servant. Respected? But how respectable? Keith, will you explain to the gentleman that I'm putting on whether either I or Pamela bought 20,000 or indeed any shares in Liston's recently? Sir Jason Fowler here. Yeah? The order was from Warsaw yesterday afternoon. I see. Keith, would you uh, explain again? All right, forget it, Keith. He's got his fingers in his ears. You can't deny that you sent the buying order. Only for Paganel's beady little eyes, Fowler, and yours. So you'd come rushing to Caswell with your muck spreader. If Liston's get that contract... They won't. The British favourites are Steadley's, if Britain gets it at all. We don't know that. And you think I don't? Yes, I'll speak to him. Lord Bly. Yes, 
Uh, Foreign Secretary. Mm hmm. And uh, there's nothing, whatever, we can do. Mm. We, we can't uh, protest. I see. Thank you, Arthur. It appears that none of our British firms will get the contract. Moves are afoot by the Americans to invoke the NATO agreement, which prohibits member countries from selling strategic equipment to communist countries. They say that road-making equipment can be regarded as strategic, as it could lead to improved mobility of communist forces. And who's been working on the Americans? Oh, that's an unworthy thought, John. I'm sure you'd like to apologize to Sir John for your mistake. Yes, I do. Will you leave it with me, John? He needs more than a finger pointing at him. But if you stay, don't collect mud to sling. You only end up flat on your face in it. I warned you, you're not big enough to tangle with Wilder on your own. I don't want him resigning. I don't mind if he suffers a little in the national interest. But any future Wilder discomforts will be by courtesy of me. Now, you go it alone. Just once more, Father and your pension will go up in smoke. Stop worrying, Lincoln. Learn to live with a cyclone. I'll make it clear to John. Young darling! I thought you were in disgrace. For a labor camp. You hoped. They realized I'm too useful in Britain. How oh, bad. A moment. For me? Jan, darling. Thank you.